Next part of the offer. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Do you understand? Now, at that point, you see, what's happened is it's, it's actually a slippery slope because it's one of these damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because if you, if you answer, you're in contract. Uh, if you don't answer, uh, again, is you fall silent. So is there a way out of that? Well, I would have to... I would have to say, but uh, and this is for myself because uh, I can't give legal advice on this, is if I was in that situation, uh, I would remain silent. I would not sign anything. Uh, I, I wouldn't open my mouth at all. Uh, just for the simple fact of the slippery slope is anything you say can and will be used against you. Do you understand so in other words, if you open your mouth at that point, it doesn't matter whether you say yes, no, or green onions. Any word means that you've contracted and you stand under it. Uh, now, uh, uh, as to uh, the uh, reservation... The question actually possibly could you, uh, the, the, uh, further on here in the chat... Sure. Um, a statement or a question of reserving your rights in the beginning, or uh, not issue, you know, not issuing consent, saying you do not consent, mm -hmm. uh, things like that, to um, for you know, the next part to that maybe. Well, again, is the the issue is well, number one is also also like if you're uh, if you are raising stuff like that is is to be polite. It is these these guys are highly highly stressed that uh, they don't know what there's coming at them although this is hard to do but we must always treat our tormentors with absolute compassion I have found by practical experience that when you do that it changes the outcome and it can even change the outcome of a court case um, so yeah, uh, Terry, I think that's good advice too. Is, uh, uh, but again, is keep in mind that everything you do is certainly under duress, threat, and intimidation. Uh, and let's talk about that because uh, they have a gun that you do not. Like, uh, you don't know if they could trigger anything that could uh, seriously harm you. So uh, it, it's something to always consider that if you're being forced to sign something, even though you have verbally stated and asked for them to write in their logbook, which, by the way, is uh, uh, enforcement agencies have a blue book. Uh, blue, again, it's, uh, there's the red and the blue thing again. But nonetheless, is they do have a blue book of conduct. And I've read through the, uh, the blue book. And I can assure you that uh, action can be taken against those officers that don't follow the rule of law. Yeah, um, most of the time now there's no signing of anything. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, take a power of attorney. All right, we do have a caller with a question, real quick, and uh, maybe we can get back to some of that. Rob Ryder. Rob, I believe you're unmuted. Do you have a question? I do. Thanks for taking my call. Hi. Um, Great uh, to have you on. Hey, Brian. Um, I was reading the uh, seven deeds of divine protest. And uh, on the second one, why are the Jesuits excluded from the protest? Uh, hold on. I'll go have a look. And it leads into my second question, depending on what the answer of that is. But, um, there has well, to be a reason. I'll, yeah, uh, ultimately is the the one to ask is Frank, and uh, we were hoping he'd uh, okay. he was going to be on, and he might still join the call. Uh, I think it has something to do. 
hold on, I'm still having a look here. It's number two, the pontifex, right? Yeah, and it's in the very first paragraph. Um, you know, all the priests, all the nuns, the pope, everybody, but it, excluding the Society of Jesus, otherwise known as the Jesuits. Now, I've heard Frank say before that they're they're like the keepers of the honor of the system. I heard him say that, you know, that honor is very important to the Jesuits, and, and that's why I wonder if that has something to do with it. I would have to speak to Frank about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, because so I, yeah. I, let's I, say it has, but just for sake of argument, let's say it has something to do with that, that they are the keepers of the honor of the system. Um then, uh, see, the deed poll, let's go to the deed poll. The deed uh-huh. poll should never be sent into the public side of a court. It should only go to the private because nothing of a living man should ever enter the court. The side of the and, court. and if you put it into the court, you, you, have, you have proved your incompetence. So my thought is you send it to the person who sent it to you, yes, privately, because when they first send it to you, it's not even in the court yet. It's a private. They're making uh, uh, accusations or assumptions, and you need to rebut their presumptions. Mm-hmm. And so if you send it into them privately to the judge or to the clerk of the courts or whatever, um, I think you should take a copy of it and send it to the Jesuits and say, hey, I've noticed these people of this, because they don't know what that is, but the Jesuits sure do. And if their job is to maintain the order and the honor of the system – I think they're going to pick the phone up and make a phone call. Well, you know, is I, I mean, I can't I can't speculate, but I'm I'm I can only maybe uh, just guess that uh, th- this is something that's that, that might uh, uh, I I don't I don't know be valid or, but I I can say this much, um, and this was experience was a few weeks ago. Uh, it was about three or four weeks ago. Was uh, there was someone that we knew uh, went through a little bit of bother, uh, where an, a mistake of fact was made, and this woman was arrested in the middle of the night, uh, uh, dragged into jail, and then taken into court straight away in the morning over a mistake of fact. And uh, anyway. Long story short, was I I got the I get the call at two o'clock in the morning. I, I went down there uh, with my friend uh, to the court, and uh, we were now this this woman had already prior to done a, a deed poll. We were wondering, well, how how the heck do you get this in? You can't just do it uh, again. Is you're saying the public and the private? Well, it's a we're still a little bit. Uh, uh, missing the bar on what's public and what's private because it turns out that uh, it's all forms of private law. Uh, but well, what's I, amazing... I, I'm not dis- I, I don't disagree with that, but mm-hmm. say anything in the public is dead, and you're coming in as a living person. Now, this goes along with the, the guys at Creditors and Commerce and the way that they mm-hmm. look, at, which is very, very similar. Yeah. Um, you know, you do everything from the private. You never bring your business into the public because a living man would never enter the public. It's all dead. You cannot be seen in the dead. It's a, it's a domain of sin, yeah. Right. So if you go in to the public and put your private stuff, you have proved your incompetence. So they don't have to look at it. The private side is when you put it in an envelope and say, please take this to the judge's chambers, and you write private on it or whatever the words are that need to be on the outside of the envelope, and it goes mm-hmm. to him in, in his chambers. That is the living side of the court, um, which I call the private side. But, but that's mm-hmm. where the living do their business. They never do it in the public. You never cross the bar, um, any of that stuff. And, and like with this, this thing with the cop, what I would do is hand him a copy of a deed poll. Keep one in your car. Say, if you don't know what it is, call it in. Because yeah, until, that's until, that's until, you, until you um, – uh, identify yourself as being the person on your driver's license. He has no jurisdiction over you. He has to get jurisdiction over you. Correct. And so that's, that's the first thing they do is ask you for your driver's license. Da, da, da. And if you give it to them, you have, you know, you've you've taken your first witness to their jurisdiction over you. And yeah, you've so actually incriminated yourself. Yeah, you yeah. have. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. You, you know, don't do that. Hand them a copy of a deed poll. 
and say, well, if you don't know what it is, maybe we should get somebody out here that does. You know, well, how about calling your watch commander? Um, and the reason – this guy who does this in California, he doesn't have a deep bowl or anything else. He drives around with a, in, in Los Angeles without plates in his car, no registration, no driver's license. He's probably been stopped six or seven times, and every time the cops have left because he doesn't give them jurisdiction and he asks them questions. And, and this is on one of the audios that's on uh, the, the Creditors and Commerce site. Mm-hmm. So I think that they're right, but the deep poll is so powerful that giving it to somebody in the public wouldn't make any sense anyways. And not alerting somebody who actually knows what it is, I think, is a, a dishonor to their system. And, you know, you don't want to create a controversy. Absolutely. Right. Rob well, uh, and, and Brian, real quick, on the uh, question regarding the Jesuits, um, they actually fall into a different uh, uh, deed of protest oh, and dishonor, number five, under Illuminati. Number five, under the Illuminati. Okay, all right. Yeah, they fall under the, all the knights. The, all the, the night uh, groups are listed there, so um, you'll you'll see them there. Just just for um, information, um, that might have been missed by by several folks, and uh, until we went really down through them, you could see that that was actually where they're at. And thank you, Ron, for pointing that out. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so, I just so, wanted to, I'm still reading through these, trying to find them myself. But okay, yeah, I just, I just I wonder just, why, at the second one, they were excluded. You know, why wouldn't they be part of that? Is it because of the separation between the Jesuits and the church itself? Is that? It, m- m- yeah, what? they were actually supposed to be the enforcement. Um, well, they took over the church, and they were the enforcement mm-hmm. arm, so to speak. Right. And so, yeah, that's where that came in. But so, but I did hear I did hear. Um, on an audio uh, two or three weeks ago um, where, you know, it was said that uh, that they honor is very, very important to the Jesuits. And, and we keep talking about honor in the courts, and the reason we don't get the remedy we think we should is because we dishonor the system of the public by trying to take private business into the public. And uh, that's yeah. why you, you cause a controversy. And uh, so maybe sending it to the private to the person in their private office instead of, you know, on the back of a uh, of a summons that you're going to put into the court record um, is something to be thought about because it does work. Uh, I mean, you can do what you're talking about uh, in court with IRS forms if you send them privately to the judge. They have red forms. They're made for living people. You know, most people don't know that, but, you know, all, all the red forms are supposed to be used by living people and, uh, um, so that's just some of the other things that people talk about who don't maybe listen to this call, um, but are, who are researching other parts of uh, uh, remedy that you know that they found that uh, mm-hmm. you know never take your private business into public, and as long as you don't do that and you don't give them jurisdiction, there's nothing they can do to you. Well, there was something that uh, that that I came across actually that was uh, kind of pivotal into how to serve into a court and uh that was when when uh when we were dealing with this woman um and we were up and i i was wondering well you know how can we get this in without actually going and bring it out in open court well it turned out now i don't know about america but certainly here in canada is the courts have a chapel right in the inside the courts I was thinking to myself, why the heck would they have a chapel that is taking donations through the Salvation Army on the red side in <laughs> and, and it's an Anglican church taking salvation? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it turns out that uh the the chapel of the court is the exact perfect place to serve an ecclesiastical deed poll and the woman uh, did that and uh, reported back to me saying that uh, not only did she get a a uh, a clean green flying pass on her competence evaluation but she also got her matter zeroed out now there uh, you go that's very very important 
Very, yeah. very important. Yeah. Very so, good.